thank you, John. It's, uh, it's great to be here, and it's great to be playing tackle football this time of the year. Um, there's 16 teams left in, the, in this uh, tackle football tournament. Uh, it's great to be part of the Sweet 16. Um, it was also nice to get, to get refreshed and have that bye week last week. Um, we got a lot of guys uh, that might have had a nick or an owie or banged up and bruised uh, back, and we should be, uh, by and large, uh, you know, 100% healthy going into this contest, which is great, which is great. Um, looking towards Valdosta State, obviously we, we spoke of them at this luncheon a week ago and, and North Alabama. Um, two great football teams, and Valdosta State came out on the upper hand of that contest and uh, a tremendous football game and uh, with two tremendous teams out of the Gulf South Conference. So um, Valdosta's well-traveled. I just, you know, looking at their schedule, they've been on the road for at least four or five of their last contests, so being on the road uh, will, will be familiar for them and comfortable for them. Um, we hope it won't be quite so comfortable when they arrive here, um, but they, they are well-traveled and, and they're bringing a good football team, which is the best way to travel. Um, talented everywhere across the board. Defensively, they're stout. Um, the, the, the Black Swarm defense, if you will, um, you know, they're, 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 they're a heck of a group. Um, they have played against an option team this year in Shorter and at two, actually, Mississippi College. Uh, and they've played well. No matter the style of play they've played against, they, they're, they're a formidable opponent up, up front and on the back end. Uh, offensively, they're particularly uh, adept, I would say, last Saturday. Uh, their quarterback came back, uh, Medlock. Um, his legs really add something to the equation. Um, they rushed for over, you know, I think I believe a school record 390 plus yards against Northern Alabama. Um, so you look at that and then uh, the, the way they distribute the ball, uh, they're very balanced. Uh, the back, O'Neal, number seven, is a load. He's 215 some pounds, maybe on the plus side of that. And uh, is, a, is a, pr probably the best running back we've seen. And then you put Medlock legs in the equation. He's 235 pounds. Uh, so when he takes and tucks it, um, you know, you got to tackle him. Both these guys are physical downhill punishing runners, and, and that's going to be a challenge for us, not to mention the quality of their offensive line. Um, they're, they're big across the board. They're physical. Um, and they're, they're playing very well right now. Uh, and they got some guys outside that can stretch you. Uh, so they're a challenge, uh, the way they can spread the field in their style of play. And uh, they're very well coached across the board in every phase of the game. Coach Dean has done a tremendous job with that program. Uh, I believe he's in his eighth year there. And you're looking at a team that as recently as 2012 won the national championship. Uh, so we're, we're playing a championship team. We're playing a team capable of winning another national championship. Now we believe we are as well. And uh, we're excited, we're excited. This is gonna be a heck of a match up here between the bricks this Saturday. And uh, uh, we eagerly anticipate it. Uh, I think we'll be ready to play. And like I said, it'll be great for us as, as the SAC conference champion uh, to carry the flag forward for our conference and uh, play, play uh, one of these uh, nationally respected teams out of the Gulf South. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions reflecting back um, weeks back or to the bye week or certainly on here this uh, coming Saturday to Val Valdosta State. Coach, we talked a little bit about this last week too. Um, you know, going into a bye week can can have some some positives. You get extra time to prepare. Um, you get some rest. What are some of the challenges coming off of a bye week? Well, I think you're, you 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 can get worried about some. Um, you lose some continuity possibly. Uh, you're in such a rhythm in the course of a season, not having had a bye week for 11 straight weeks, um, that you might get it you know out of rhythm. Um, we 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 practice with that in mind, and and we aspire to show up and be ready to play. Um, but we'll take that bye week. I mean, the fact that we went undefeated, went 11-0, won the conference, that, that really advanced us into the second round of this tournament. Um, and so I think there's more to be gained um, than on the other side of that equation. Coach, uh, being the Thanksgiving holiday, <coughs> is, it, <coughs> excuse me, is it harder to keep your guys kind of focused on what's coming up or because this team has gone through this so many times now, they're kind of used to the scheduling and what to expect and all that. Well, I think I think having been in the playoffs, uh, we have we have uh, some veterans that certainly have, and we have some members of our coaching staff that have been here through this transition, and and our support staff obviously. So that all smooths uh, a lot of what could possibly be the rough edges out of it. Um, there aren't many surprises here. Um, 
you know, shoot, I wish it wasn't th uh, Thanksgiving break so some more of our, our students could be around, stay around, and maybe out. But I think a lot of them are going to come back and find a way to get a ticket to the game this Saturday. Uh, we expect a, a great crowd here um, Saturday afternoon between the bricks. But there are some challenges. Um, but like I said, I think with our administration and our, our coaches that were on the previous staff that were hold, that held over and our players, um, th they're used to it this time of year. They, they expect it. They expect to be playing football when we're um, eating turkey. Coach, let me uh, shoot you what will surely be the stupidest question of the afternoon. Uh, what kind of a game are you looking for Saturday? <laughs> well. You might be right. No, 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 no I, I probably, it, it's hard to say. I mean, you can have two very talented teams. Uh, I think two complete football teams, offensively and defensively and in the kicking game, I think. I think both squads are, are more than capable, and, and that's why we're both still playing. Um, it'll be an emotional contest, as, as playoff games are. You know, I think... Uh, and it's interesting, uh, I was talking to Coach Dick Tomey, who happens to be here today. Uh, coach, coach Tomey um, was the head coach at the University of Arizona, uh, head coach at, at Hawaii, head coach at San Jose State, was assistant with the 49ers and at Texas, and has been there and done that, is now retired. He's also the father-in-law of Mary Shadahari, our, our special teams coach, the second uh, safeties coach. Um, so Coach Tomey's visiting us, and, and we're talking about football and, and the game of football and what wins in football and, and we're saying boy how much the game has changed and with the spread and the up tempo and the no huddle and, and all this stuff how, how football is so different and then we're like nah not really football it's the same the same thing that wins games the same thing that this one game since Rutgers played Princeton when they first kicked this thing off it's 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 effort it's the turnover battle it's the kicking game it's who wins the critical situations who wins the mental game. And those are what we call our keys to victory. And those things don't fluctuate. Um, that's what's consistent in this game. And the team that does a better job in those five areas is the team that's going to win this football game and ultimately have at least one more point than the opposition. And, and, and again, we aspire to be that team. So does Valdosta. you got two great football teams going head to head. It's going to be fun. We've talked throughout the season about how players on our team help each other from like the quarterbacks, Ike and stuff when he was out. And you've mentioned the kicking team um, several times this year. Can you talk about how, how they work together? Because it's kind of an unusual situation where today you see a lot of teams have just one kicker. And he does all three phases. But we have one for each one. Can you talk about how they work with each other and how they support each other and how that's worked out as a threesome? Yeah, it, it's a, I don't know that we necessarily scripted it that way, but that's the way it's evolved. And they all have a certain strengths. Like Justin Powell, uh, our place kicker, field goal kicker, is, is a potential All-American at that. And he's su in such a groove. With, and Mikey DeStevens is the holder, our, our starting punter. And, and Mikey's a, a heck of an athlete as well there. Um, but Justin was kicking so well, you don't want to really mess with that. Now I'm thinking about kicking off. There's, it's just different. The, the, the swing pass different. The, there's, it, it's not as simple as it quite looks probably to the, to the common eye. Uh, so that's, to have, to have Justin there is, is he, he, it starts there. Now Hunter is added to that. Hunter has a big leg. Hunter Harris, our kickoff specialist, he has a big leg. He can hang the ball. He can place the ball. Uh, he can do a lot of neat things. Uh, as our kickoff guys. So that's been invaluable to us. So you just go back to the Mars Hill game and look how he spread that ball around and, and made a challenge for Demetri Holmes, who's the, the conference player of the year offensively in our conference. You know, so those three guys have been tremendously productive. And then I, again, I, I, the guys that never get mentioned are, are, are Stu Sherrill, you know, and Drayton Queen as our, our short snappers and long snappers, which are, which are different as well. Uh, a, lot, a lot of places, one guy handles those, both those job descriptions. So uh, we have five specialists that spend a lot of time together in the practice environment, and they work exceptionally hard at it. And, uh, you know, again, that, the, the kicking game is the key to victory, and, and, and it's not lip service here at our place.
Coach, talk about putting 14 players on the um, all-conference team, winning the Jacobs blocking trophy, and then you getting coach of the year. Talk a little bit about that leadership going into this week. Um, well, you know, all those awards and all of our guys that did earn the awards that were certainly deserving. Um, but those awards are all team awards. Uh, anything that's accomplished, no one's accomplishing those things on an island. Um, everyone is counting on a guy next to them in some capacity uh, for them to do their job as well. So, um, you know, the all-conference, the, 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 the blocking trophy, the coach of the year trophy, all those are Lenore Ron Bear awards. And, uh, I, and, you know, I still think we should have had a couple more guys that could have joined us in that award ceremony. Um, but uh, proud of this team. Uh, it's a team, and, and you get those accolades when you have team success. Um, and, and being the conference championship, um, be, excuse me, being the conference champion, well, we should have the most because we're the team that stacked the most W's. Can you talk about the process of uh, your trimming what you normally would suit up to the playoff roster limit and how that how that works for you and in the change of what some some guys will be doing things that they didn't do all year yeah, we we kind of had our our eye on that going forward towards the the last probably two three games of the season because you know, really where it impacts you is in the special teams um, when you're talking about carrying a roster of 54 that's a lot different when you have 70 um, so that's, that's been a really challenge, and there's, you know, when you get down to the last few, it makes it especially challenging. Um, and, it, and it really comes down to where guys can help you in the kicking game, because you're one and two deep, or you're one and two deep. Um, and then we're carrying those five specialists. So that makes our number crunching at the at 52, 53, 54 all the more problematic. And then we're hoping to get a few guys back that have been, you know, nicked or banged up that are healthy. So it stretches us. It makes us think uh, we got to get the right combination out there. That being said, we have our best guess, and then we, we still got until warm-ups to make the final decisions. But with that being said, I appreciate everyone coming today. Uh, we look forward to this Saturday against Valdosta State. Uh, it'll be a championship atmosphere, uh, Sweet 16 Division II playoffs. Let's have some fun. Go Bears.